Hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday on the Hook with Cynthia. My name is Cynthia with Cynthia's Joyful Creations and I am happy to be here with you. So to get started, here's our little friend who sets our timer for one hour. So let me go ahead and get her started. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. Everyone is always welcome. And what is Wednesday on the Hook? Just in case you're new, Wednesday on the Hook is probably one of my favorite segments right now that I am doing because it guarantees me one hour every single week to just crochet whatever I want. It doesn't have to be anything I'm doing for a tutorial. It doesn't have to be anything I'm doing for a special project for someone. It is something that I can work on for just me if I want, whether it's a gift to someone or a baby blanket that I might put away for a future grandbaby, or um, it might be, you know, uh, a request from someone. It might be just something I want to do. So what am I going to work on today? Well, before I get to that, I want to show you what I was working on last week. So if you remember, I was working on this big orange comfy, comfy blanket and it is completely finished. It ended up being a little bit bigger than I wanted, or excuse me, a little bit bigger than I thought it would be. I love how big it is. So this is perfect for snuggling up on the couch in the living room and just hanging out with Mr. Joyful and uh, cuddling up under. It's big enough for both of us to sit on one end of the couch and have it go between us. I have some pictures that I'm going to pop up here in just a minute to show you how it looks across the back of my couch. And Mr. Joyful and I spread it out on our bed just to give you an indication about how big it actually is. So Todd and I have a queen size bed and this blanket covered almost all of it except for the pillow section. So if I had to guess, it's probably more the size of a full size blanket for like a double bed. And so it is perfect. And so all I did, the only stitch I used in the entire blanket was a half double crochet. Even on the border, I did a half double crochet around. And I did it around about one, two, three times. So I know it's kind of hard to see. You can definitely tell that it has a definitive, you know, edging to it so that there is a border but it is actually three rows deep. So it started right there. So that's the width of my border. But yeah, I think it turned out great. It's nice and fluffy and squishy and it's actually very warm. And so let me just remind you real quick, I'm using my walker <laughs> to hold this big guy. What I used and then I will put those pictures up real quick for you to, to take a look at. So again, I made this blanket using a 19 millimeter hook. It was just a plastic hook. I don't even think, oh, it's a boy hook. I don't know if you can see that or not. I think you can right there. But yeah, it was the biggest hook I've ever used to date. And it was actually quite fun. I definitely plan on making more blankets using this hook. And the yarn I used, I don't have any left, but I have some similar to it in a different colorway. And again, that was made by the Stitch Studio by Nicole from the Macroon family. And it was in the colorway Macroon Coral. And those skeins were, or cakes, were purchased from AC Moore before they closed. And this one was also purchased from AC Moore. And if you'll remember, this is the one that I said I had made a blanket on last week when we were together. 
and I had two cakes left and I've decided to increase the size of that blanket because right now it's kind of about the size of a nice you know large size baby blanket and it's not really quite comfortable enough for someone to cover up with and these are you know going to be um, continue to be used in my living room as my children come over and hang out and whatnot but before I get into that I wanted to tell you that when I did this blanket here the coral macaroon I had just a little bit of yarn left over when I finished and so what's one to do with scraps do I save my scraps well yes I save my scraps and um, that was Mackenzie saying hello shaking her collar <laughs> Um, which all of you should know who Mackenzie is by now, my grand dog for my son who's a Marine. Um, if you don't, then there's a special segment under my Joyful Life series on Thursdays and Sadie and Mackenzie were in that. And real quick on that excerpt, real quick, yes, I have learned that there was a portion of the video on Sadie and Mackenzie and introducing my wonderful um, beloved cat Callie and my grand dog Falcor that did not show up so I do plan on redoing that video uh, for you to have in its entirety but I am waiting till after Friday um, because there's something special about that video and so after Friday I will put up a brand new one okay so I had a little bit of scrap yarn left over. What do you do with it? Well, I usually save my scrap yarn and I use it, you know, somewhere in another project. But I had enough left over that I thought, hmm, I'm just going to try and make something with it because there was something I kind of wanted and needed. And um, I thought, well, why not? So I made, it's a small one, but I made a little dust mitt. I have several of these and you have seen tutorials of them on my channel. I've done one that's striped, it's blue and it's striped and it's rather large and it has fringe, oh tons of fringe coming off of it. Um, that was a fun project, a tedious project but a fun project. But I have dust mitts um, in my car. The one in my car is a little bit narrower and a lot longer and it's a lot looser um, of a stitch and so it's real fluffy and, and you know, uh, moves very freely. And so I have that in my car to keep my dashboard and stuff dusted down. I have a nice size one that's uh, kind of peach and yellow and white in my living room along with that blue one with the fringe that I made. And I just use that to dust throughout the house. Um, and then this one I have done, and I did it also in a half double crochet stitch because I wanted the stitches to be kind of close together and tight. And this one I am going to use on my laptop screen. So to help keep the dust off of that, the pollen that comes in through the open windows when we choose to do that. So I was able to put the rest of the scraps to good use. Now, in completing this, this is all I had left over. So I think I did pretty good. But I will hang on to this one little piece and put it in my special little scrap box because you never know, that might make a perfect nose for a Aragurumi or a snowman. So yeah, we're gonna keep it and utilize it. So that finished up that project and I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to pop these pictures up for you that I promised and then I'm gonna show you one more completed project. <music> Thank you. 
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed those pictures. And now I want to share another blanket that I have finished. This is the baby blanket that I was working on and it's just a lacy blanket. I showed it last Friday in Cup to Hook Conversations and it is a baby blanket that I am putting away for a future grandbaby. And this is how it turned out. And it's it's kind of long. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I will pop some pictures up for you to see it in its entirety where you can see exactly how long it is. And the yarn that I use for that is the Yarn Inspirations Karen Cotton Cakes. And let's see, this is a medium number four and it is 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. It's an 8.8 .8 ounce skein which is about 250 grams and about 530 yards. So there's a good amount of yardage in this. And it took exactly two cakes to make this blanket. And the recommended hook size is a five millimeter, a US H hook. And I did use a six millimeter J hook to make this blanket. It is actually very easy. It is a repeat row pattern. Um, you get your first row established and then you um, have one, two, six rows that you repeat to create this. And I just let the colorway take effect as it came in the cakes itself. And now I did choose before I started working on the border to make sure this was, let's see, uh, let's see, this was the bottom portion and that's the color that I had started with. So when I went to finish up, I went ahead and made sure that the top portion ended in that same color and then I put the border on and the border is nothing more than just I did a single crochet stitch all the way around the blanket and then I came back and I just did chains to kind of create even more of a lacy look to it so it really blended in very well together but yet you know you can tell that it has that definitive border look to it so yeah I'm very, very pleased with it. And I love the way that it drapes. So it'll be great for covering baby up, especially in the spring or the summertime. But, and how much yarn did I have left over from that? This is the container that I use to hold my cakes. And this is what I had left over. So, not a lot. Again, I will hang on to this little bit of scrap to put in another project. Or if I run out of something, maybe it can help me finish something up. So, it definitely will be used for something in the future. Okay, well, I hope that you have already begun crocheting I am going to take my finished objects and put them to the side so that I can start <music> The project that I am going to work on today, again, is a blanket that I finished a long time ago. Uh, January would have been a year, so I finished it a little over a year ago. In fact, I worked on it and I started it and worked on it and finished it up 
during the time that we were at my middle son's Marine graduation from boot camp. And uh, at the time, the color was kind of a little appropriate, even though these are not Marine colors, more maybe Army colors, but nonetheless, <laughs> I was trying to finally utilize that yarn and see what it felt like because I had never created anything with a bulky yarn like that. So before I get started, you know me, I always like to lotion my hands and keep my, my best tools moisturized. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to show you the blanket that I'm working on that I had already made and then I'm going to add these two skeins to it. I know that I won't complete that during our time today, but I'm going to get it started. And if I don't have an opportunity to work on it between now and our time next week, well then I'll just bring it back and hopefully finish it up with you guys next week. All right. So I've got that nice and rubbed in. And now with this other blanket, like I said, I used a 19 millimeter hook. When I did this one, because again, it was the first time I had worked with this yarn, I chose to use a J hook. That's my like my go-to hook. And it's very tight, so it looks very, very different from the one that I had shown you. Now, I like it loose. I love that loose stitch, but also, didn't that create a really beautiful blanket being all nice and tight like that? And I will be honest. Um, for me, it covers from my feet are covered, and you see where it comes up on me. So it's still a good size blanket. Um, but for my husband, it doesn't help him at all because Todd's a lot taller than I am. So when he grabs it to cuddle up with, it's not exactly the perfect size blanket. So I thought I had these extra two skeins. Why not go ahead and add some more yarn to it? So that's what I'm going to do. And you can see where I kind of had started and created a border. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to keep going around this. So we have stripes going one way and then we'll have stripes going another way. And it's okay because if it doesn't look that great, it's just going to be utilized in my living room to help keep all of my loves who come to visit warm during our family movie time. So what size hook am I going to use? Again, I had used a J hook to do this. But because I'm going to be adding this and continuing on the border, I've decided to increase the hook a little bit. I'm not going to go as large as the 19 millimeter, but I am going to go to an 8 millimeter, which is an L hook. So that's what I am going to do. And this color, by the way, is called Macron Fern. And again, it's a bulky five, and I don't think I told you, it's 100% polyester. It's approximately 258 yards in here, uh, which is equivalent to about 300 grams, and it's a 10.5 ounce skein. So there is a good bit of yarn in here. And we're just gonna get that pulled out, and we're gonna get started. And After I get it started, I'm going to kind of clear my table off here. All my goodies I had to show you. And real quick, I know that I will not get it all finished today, and that's okay. So I'm going to show you the stitch marker, and I could have done this at the end, but I'm going to show you the stitch marker that I'm going to use. And it actually matches, the, the little stone matches the blanket. I don't want to show you real quick what it says. But see how that matches? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I like to color coordinate my stitch markers to my blankets. And normally I always use two stitch markers on a blanket. Normally when I'm starting out a project, I will put one at the base 
on the right side so I always know what the right side of the project is and then I use one to keep my stitches in place while I'm not working and this particular stitch marker it's a pear um, the other one was brown but look what it says let's see if I can get it to turn around earlier it wanted to do it and I didn't want to show it now I want to show it and it doesn't want to do it okay this too shall pass is what it says and I may have to zoom in here a little bit and I can do that there we go yep this too shall pass and this wonderful beautiful stitch marker was designed by Rose Likes Crochet and I will include in the description box a link to her channel but it was given to me by Brie from Brie's Little Crochet Corner and so yep and if you're new to my channel I've recently had back surgery and I am still recovering from that I had the first one on February uh, second and the second one on February 4th I was only supposed to have one and in the second one I lost mobility of my leg so I'm still trying to get that back as well and so that was a nice little gift from Brie just a little bit of encouragement and reassurance that this too shall pass and it will so I'm gonna get this blanket started I plan on I'm trying to remember uh, what I did I think I did double crochets on this one I did so to make it even a little bit more distinctive I am going to try and just do half double crochets on it and see where that takes me again it's so weird because after using that nice big hook on this bulky yarn and I just flew through it it's going to be interesting to see how it is to work with this smaller hook with this yarn but it's happening it's just going to be a slower process and that's okay because being a crocheter a designer of any kind that's what it's all about is creativity and trying new things going out of your comfort zone so this is working up nicely I'm gonna show you how it looks in just a minute I'm kind of working in my tail from where I just joined on so when I get enough of that tail worked in that I can cut it off and I was looking to see if I had my scissors laid out and I should have them somewhere because I was working on a tutorial and I do have them right here but it's nice to see using the same yarn how different a project turns out using that bigger hook that's more you know a, a hook that's recommended or larger than versus a hook that is way smaller than the recommended okay maybe two more stitches and I will have this worked in enough that I'm happy and pleased with it I will say that when it comes to working your yarn tails in like this they seem to stay even better with the bulkier yarn when I use a yarn weight that's smaller than this bulky yarn I prefer to weave it in at the end of the colors that way I can make sure that I'm weaving it in in two directions with my darning needle okay so that's what that looks like so far and I like that I can tell though already with the height of this stitch that if I do put these two 
skeins around it, it is going to increase the height of this blanket and the length of it rather quickly, even with this smaller hook. And that's okay. That's cool. So what are you working on? What is your project of choice for this hour? And I realize your, your one free hour of crocheting may not actually be on Wednesday like it is for me, but whenever you get that chance, it's just a nice reward to yourself because we tend to live with busy schedules. And for some of us with COVID, we may have more time on our hands than an hour and can crochet more than that. But I know that during my normal, regular schedule, finding an hour between all of my videos and my job at the hospital, I don't always have time for myself to do what I want. And that's been one of the, the good things about this recovery Although I have to say in the beginning, I was doing good to crochet anything, but if I had a good day, I didn't necessarily still feel like doing it. And even if I was doing good and the pain was a little bit there, I didn't always feel like doing it because just the pain of, a, you know, the weight of a project on my lap would upset my leg at times. But I'm getting a little bit better and a little bit stronger and so yeah I'm able to get things done um, it took me in the end just because I was working on other things it took me a week and a half to make that orange blanket and it took me about four and a half days to make that lacy blanket. That lacy blanket worked up really, really quickly. Um, so again, I will put in the description box a link to the tutorial that inspired me to make that blanket. And I did follow her tutorial for the body of the blanket. She did not have anything on there to add a border to the blanket, although you can clearly see on her blankets that she's added some kind of border to it. So I decided to just do chains to kind of keep it in that lacy effect, even going around the sides. And I don't know, maybe a continuous single crochet stitch with maybe a double crochet and then ending with a single crochet might have been a nice little, you know, border for that blanket, but I chose to just keep it kind of lacy all the way around. Again, to keep it kind of that spring summery. So, you know, when the baby needs a little bit of some covering, but not too much because it's, it's warm outside. And by keeping it completely lacy, it also makes it a nice little blanket to use with the baby if you're going to church or somewhere as a special occasion. Although it wasn't designed for like a special occasion, it's more designed for an everyday type of blanket. But I am working on another baby blanket on our Yarn Joy Adventures, and it is not near as big as I normally like for a baby blanket, but it is still a success because it will be the perfect size. For using when the baby's in the car seat or in a swing so it worked out perfect I chained the normal chains that I normally do for a baby blanket in concordance with the multiples that are required for that pattern but the way the pattern works out the blanket is a little bit smaller like I said than I would normally prefer for a baby blanket but it worked out perfect and has now given me the idea that some of my baby blankets don't need to be as big as I normally do them because they would be perfect for using in a car seat or in a baby swing. Okay, so real quick before we go into our question, 
Today is Wednesday, April the 14th. I do hope that everyone is having a great day. Today is a very special day for Mr. Todd and I, or Mr. Joyful, as some of you like to call him. But today is our anniversary. And so, yes. He surprised me last night, and unfortunately, you know, I can't drive yet. That's been one of the hardest things, <laughs> because I'm always in the car, and uh, I haven't driven since the end of January. In fact, the last time I came home from work in the middle of the night, because I just couldn't make it anymore, that was the last night that I drove and that was January 26 or 27th whichever one of those days was a Tuesday and so uh, I well I went into work on Tuesday night and I came home during the wee hours of Wednesday morning technically so I guess I suppose both of them would be correct but anyway He surprised me with a beautiful card and these socks and it they have like this fuzzy inside layer to them so they're very very soft and warm because my temp my body temperature is regulated by my feet so if my feet are cold I'm cold if my feet are hot I'm hot <laughs> And more times than not, I'm always cold. So he got me these slippers, or these socks, really. And oh my gosh, they are warm. And I did not bring them to show. Uh, and that's okay. Because, I don't know, I've been really putting some thought into, you know, when I get gifts about sharing them um, sometimes I think it really needs to be something intimate between the giver and the sender or the giver and the receiver so anyway maybe I'll share in appropriate moments like I did with Bree's stitch marker she sent me that Rose from Rose Likes Crochet made you know that to me was kind of an appropriate time so rather than showing everything but anyway so he got me those socks and in the same type of material he got me what is similar to a pocket shawl but it's very much the size of a scarf and on the inside it has that fuzzy layer and on the outside it has more of what looks like a knitted design and it does have two pockets that button and unbutton and I used both of them last night after he gifted them to me and it did call for a very cozy evening as we hung out together and watched a little bit of TV so and normally I cannot sleep in socks even if my feet are freezing I cannot sleep in socks if I go to bed with them I always wake up and they're off and I did go to sleep in these socks and they stayed on that's just how kind of snug they are but I was comfortable and I didn't get uncomfortable but when he got up this morning I did ask him to help me take them off so look at there you guys I got one side already done so yeah happy anniversary to Todd and I and I will just have to make it up to him when I can drive again and of course he said just being in his life is is all the gift he needs but oh one of these days on my joyful life series he and I will come on and we will tell our story um, it is kind of a little bit of a romantic story but we knew each other in high school but we didn't exactly like hang out we had a mutual friend and that mutual friend and I 
we didn't even hang out together. We just happened to work together uh, in the same job after school. And so Todd actually worked a couple doors down in the same little mall complex that his friend Howard and I worked at. We worked at Sears and it was, at that time it was called Sears Surplus. And Todd worked at Pizza Factory. And so I would see them, you know, meeting up together after work and whatnot. But, but I, I knew Howard from work and, um, yeah, but Todd and I, we, we knew of each other. We spoke to one another, but we weren't like friend friends. And so then it was later in life that our paths crossed again and one thing led to another and voila, here we are. And I'm going to leave the voila out because I would like for him to be with me. Also kind of putting in his input and sharing his version when we do the voila story. So I don't know when that'll be. It'll come. So we'll just have to be patient. But So the question I had for today, I am going to put on hold for next week. And in light of our anniversary, I'm going to change the question up. And the question is, if you want to share, when is your anniversary? And either share how you met or you can share one of your favorite anniversaries. It's entirely up to you. And I know that it's kind of hard to do that when you're having to write our ladybug acted like she had something to say but I know our time can't be up oh no we still have at least another good 30 minutes or so um, I know it's hard to write it in and I would love 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 for this segment to be live but until I go back to work, it could be, but then I don't know about you, but I would get dependent on it being live and then it would be so disappointing to have to go back to a recorded video. So I am a creature of consistency and so I want you to not expect it to be alive and then all of a sudden, boom. It's a recorded video and it would be disappointing. It'd be disappointing to me too. So I know it's asking much, but for those of you who want to share, I hope you will. Even though I know it's easier to just like to pop up on here and invite you as a guest and let you speak it versus typing it in. But I appreciate it if you feel like sharing. I will enjoy reading them. So my favorite anniversary. So this is our 16th anniversary. And in some ways it's like, wow, has it really only been 16? Because it feels like we've been together forever. In a good way. <laughs> um, and then other times, it's just like, just 16? I mean, it seems like it has to be more than that. <laughs> but, but this is our 16th anniversary. And I will explain more of that in our, you know, video under my Joyful Life series. But I'll give you a brief little thing. 
So this is going to sound weird and it's going to sound like we're crazy, but April 14th, 2005, which would be 16 years ago, is when Todd and I decided to actually start dating. And September 29th of 2005 is our actual wedding date. But April 14th just has such a huge significance for us because for us, that's when our life together really began. And um, that's the moment that we just really knew that we were in love. And yes, if you count the days from April 14th to September 29th, that is not a long uh, time. We kind of started dating and we kind of uh, skipped the engagement period and went straight into a marriage. And you would think that a marriage that came so quickly after dating, just beginning to date, <clears throat> would probably not still be going on right now. But um, we're still kind of dating. <laughs> we're still in that puppy love phase. So don't don't tell our inner selves, you know, so that we ruin it. <laughs> So, uh, I know that sounds crazy, but September, or excuse me, uh, April 14th is the day that we celebrate, even though technically right now the piece of paper says September 29th. Todd and I um, we did not want to live together and not be married, but we wanted April 14th to be our wedding date and in all physicality it it was but on paper it still says September 29th and we will one day have that changed we, we will literally get remarried um, kind of more as a vow renewal but but we will have that date physically changed so on September 29th, <clears throat> and I really don't want to tell too much of the story without him, but <clears throat> we met a good friend who um, actually was certified to marry us, and their families were all meeting at Sears to get pictures done I guess for Christmas you know and all that but so Todd and I met them at the Sears portrait studio and that's where we legally got married and that was okay <clears throat> because we were already in the planning stages of planning a big April 14th wedding for 2006 and I mean, we had almost everything done. Uh, I think the only things that weren't done at that point in time were like last minute things and, you know, the cake and all that. But everything else was done. Church reserved. You know, my wedding dress was purchased. His tuxedo was purchased. Um, tuxedos for all of my boys were purchased. Um, flowers were done, bridesmaids dresses were ready, which we weren't having too many and, you know, suits were ready for the groomsmen and whatnot. And, um, yeah. And as the day got closer, there was a lot of things that was going on in our life circled around the boys, um, so you have to remember when their father and I, unfortunately, ended our marriage, 
our boys were four, six, and eight years old. And when Todd came into the picture, they were six, eight, and 10. I'm just making sure I got my facts right. Yes. And so there was a lot circling around them. And then each of us had some family members that were just making our wedding kind of more about them. And so I looked at him and I'm like, look, this is not, unfortunately, this is not my first rodeo. I thought it would have been. I was very careful. I didn't get married the first time until I was 27. And, um, yeah, well, I was 26, actually, 26, 27. I was 27. <clears throat> but unfortunately, that's another story for another day. But their father and I were physically married for 10 years. And, um, when it was all said and done, but eight years. Eight years. And that was good for him. That was a good long haul for him. But anyway, so Todd and I got to talking and I said, look, I've done this before. And I had a beautiful day. So this is all about us, but it's more about you. Because I'm hoping that this is the only time you'll ever get married. And because of, you know, things with the boys and these, these family members that were making it about them, and, and at that time, Todd was kind of more a very quiet individual. He has blossomed <laughs> from there. Everybody knows him as a jokester and he makes you laugh. But, um, but he was still very kind of shy and quiet then. And so he decided that he would rather take everything back to the stores and turn in and, you know, if we lost deposits, great, but we got all of our deposits back on everything. So that was a sign that this was good. And we took everything back to the store except for the boys' tuxes or suits and Todd's suit and my dress. And then the flowers, you know, we already had made for the boys and for Todd and my bouquet. My mom helped me with those. But anyway, everything else, it got returned. And we took that money and we decided that we would rent a cabin somewhere for a week and we would spend a week for our honeymoon. And so we both love magnolia trees. So we happened to find this park in Georgia. And for those of you who are Georgia fans, are from Georgia. It was General Coffee State Park. And so we um, were going to spend our first night in Savannah, Georgia, because I wanted to show him around Savannah since I was a missionary there. And then after that, we would move on <clears throat> to this cabin in Georgia and we would stay uh, there for the rest of the week. And so It was all worked out and all good to go. And it was going to be just him and I, and we were actually going to do a wedding ceremony and videotape it um, of just the two of us. And that happened. But as it turned out, two days before we were to leave, the boy's father stated that he was not going to get them for, from, for spring break. And things are a lot different and a lot better now. 
but back then, who knows if it was done out of spite or whatnot. But for whatever reasons he had and for whatever reasons he was not going to get them, that meant now that the boys were going on our wedding slash honeymoon trip with us. And it actually turned out to be a huge, huge blessing in disguise because it allowed the boys, they already loved Todd, you know, um, when he and Howard would come around before they even knew we were dating um, and help out with things around the yard that I could not do or was attempting to do and looked really foolish doing it, like trying to chop down a tree that had halfway fallen over my driveway with an axe was quite hilarious. And <clears throat> when they were finished, um, because Howard was more my friend at the time, but, uh, he would, you know, he and I would carry on a conversation and Todd would chase the boys around the yard and he would jump up in the trampoline with them. And it just was so tender, but anyway, so they were fond of him, but that week gave them an opportunity to really bond. And so that was very sweet and very precious and a time that neither one of us will take for granted. And it, it actually changed the course of some of the things that Todd and I ended up doing that week that we would have not ever had that were just wrapped full of blessings. And for example, um, we ended up, because the boys ended up being with us, we ended up buying a slip and slide to put outside the cabin. And we all ended up having so much fun on that slip and slide. And then because the boys were with us, we ended up taking some of their gaming systems and we got to play some video games with them that otherwise there would have been no gaming systems there that week. And so, um, but the things that I cherish the most is I always would do story times with my boys. And usually we always read a chapter of a book every night before they went to bed. And so with them being with us, that was going to be no different. But instead of doing it before we went to bed, we um, started doing it. We would go on these little nature hikes. And of course, General Coffee State Park is known for having one of the largest magnolia trees on the East Coast. And so one of the trails would lead to that magnolia tree. And um, But anyway, along the way, whenever we'd stop and take breaks to rest, on these nature trails, we would stop and read a little bit of the book. So here we are out in nature and we're reading these stories. And at that time, we were actually doing a series and I was so thankful, I almost didn't. I almost brought one book, but I ended up bringing two, which was great because we went through both books um, between our hike readings and our bedtime readings. But the boys were so into dragons. And so the story was, you know, of course, you know, a fiction story, but it was based on dragons and it was really cool to be out in nature and then reading those stories. And those are just memories and, and times that we had that we would not have had had the boys not come. And then I'll never forget the night that we actually did our wedding, which was on April 14th. That's right. We went during the week of April 14th and um i can't remember it was like in the early part of the week um it was like a tuesday or a wednesday but we had our wedding out by this pond that was in the park and um actually just across from our cabin not too far but we had other people that were there and they stopped and they watched us get married and um it was it was really cool there was a bridge so when I came to join Todd, I walked across the bridge and the boys walked with me. So in a way, like they were giving me away, although they kind of um, were misbehaving that day. So uh, it was <laughs> not as perfect as it could have been. And I'm sure it was hard for them, you know, even though they loved Todd and, and we had already bonded several days on the trip. It still was kind of hard for them because at that point in time, um, without being ugly, their dad was kind of hit and miss on his visitation. And most of the time at that point in time, he wasn't coming around as much and was always canceling. And so 
there was a lot of confusion for them. And so their emotions were all over the place. And so they acted out a lot more than they behaved during that little ceremony. But nonetheless, we got through it and uh, thanked everyone for watching and even had somebody that kind of came and took over the camera, even though it was on a tripod, to kind of get better, you know, angles and whatnot. And, but we left and we went out to eat that night. And of course, Todd and I went as we were dressed and the boys went as they were dressed. And, um, we went to a Ruby Tuesdays and they ended up after we finished our meal, because obviously it was a special occasion for us to be dressed so formally, but, um, and my dress wasn't exactly white. It was like a pale pink and, um, but still, and, um, I had on these silk gloves that went all the way up the arms and I had on a little tiara and so when they asked us what the occasion was and we told them that we'd just gotten married and joined our family they brought us this humongous I mean humongous goblet full of ice cream it was a it was an ice cream sundae like a banana split type thing it was huge. Even after the five of us dug into that, we still left a good bit of it. That's how big it was. And, um, and it was a lot of fun, you know. And so those are moments that I, I will cherish forever. But, oh my gosh, you guys, one more side and I've completed one round. <laughs> so leading into anniversaries because that was not an anniversary that was more like a honeymoon um todd and i have only gone somewhere once for our anniversary and we actually went during our physical right now anniversary even though we got married on April 14th, we still got married on September 29th. And that's what the paperwork says. And like I said, one day we will get that changed to represent the April 14th. But he and I secretly kind of quietly represent the 29th because that still is a very special day. But April 14th is the one that we publicly, openly announce and celebrate, you know. But anyway... Only one anniversary in these past 15, because this will make our 16th year, have we gone anywhere? You know, we've done little weekends here and there, getaways, but it was never for, like, quote, unquote, our anniversary. So we decided four years ago that we were going to go somewhere for a week for our anniversary. And that was like unheard of because I worked for the hotel and I would never take time off. Like I was bad. I was very bad. I really put the job before my family and I will never do that again. The job will never take precedence over my family. There's too many job opportunities out in the world to ever put a job before family. But anyway, um, I agreed to take a week off and we were going to get a cabin and go stay in the mountains. And we did. And, um, we were able to take Sadie, which made it even more special because, you know, she was still kind of new to our family at that time. And we didn't really like the idea of her being away from us for a week. You know, we weren't sure how she would take that. So we made sure that we got a cabin that, um, what, you know, is pet friendly and um so yeah we went and we stayed at a cabin in north carolina we were looking for tennessee because tennessee is our favorite state but we found one in our price range in fact this was a really good deal like we had seven eight days and seven nights 
and we paid right around $400. Like, that was amazing. And, of course, you know, it was going to have a full kitchen so we could cook our own meals. And that's what we did. They did have Wi-Fi, but if you were away from the cabin, you pretty much did not have Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi was only in the cabin. But we were so high up on the mountain that there was no Wi-Fi. And it was quite funny because at one point in time, I had to go literally sit on the side. When I say side, I mean side of the mountain just to catch enough of a signal to check my emails and make phone calls back to the hotel. So that only happened one day because um, the whole goal was not to happen at all. But we happened to have been down at the base of the mountain um, one afternoon. We had gone to go to a Walmart to get some things and to get some food, you know, we had food, but there were some specific things that we wanted. And as soon as we were coming down that mountain, you know, our phones started pinging, especially mine. And so I had text messages. And so I was responding to something of a text message. Our time is up. We're going to go over just a little bit today. <coughs> um, for one of the groups that was in the house at the hotel that week. But anyway, um, we had an amazing time. It was so great to wake up early in the morning, go sit outside at this picnic table on the porch because there was like a, a porch with a little overhang so you weren't like right under the sun or whatever and have coffee and we ate our breakfast out there every morning and Sadie just loved having that closeness with us and just bonding with us. She was not a fan of riding up and down the mountain though. She got car sick very easily. And, um, but she was, she was young. And so anyway, um, in fact, one of the pictures that was in the video of them was her. And I put Sadie loves going um, to the mountains on vacation. And she had this round cloth toy on her face and, and her nose and eyes were peeking through it. But, um, anyway, so that was her. But anyway, um, for three days of our trip, we were there a couple days, <clears throat> but then our son, Jonathan, he came and spent three days with us. And that was so great. And, and we would go down the mountain and we went, um, over into Georgia and actually went to a state park there where he could go fishing and whatnot. And so that was a lot of fun. He went fishing and Todd and I went on nature trails and nature hikes. Um, and got to see some waterfalls and whatnot. And then we'd meet back up. And then we went into some of the, you know, the, the novelty shops and stuff that were along the way. And um, we found this really cool rock. And I'll take a picture of that rock. And I will include it in here as well. But anyway, Todd found it. And he gave it to me. And so, anyway, uh, yeah. We just enjoyed that, and that's the only trip that we have ever done to celebrate our anniversary. And so we're well overdue for another one. But um, the odd thing about that, though, is because we had no cell signal, no one could get in touch with us. And so um, now when we were at the cabin, they could, but it just so happens that a lot of times when they'd call, we wouldn't be at the cabin. And, um, and even though when we were back, for some reason, I guess the signal wasn't strong enough, but we weren't getting text messages. So the day we actually left and we we're coming down the mountain and our phones are pinging like crazy, um, people were worried about us and people who didn't know that we had gone on that trip. Now, like our immediate families and stuff knew the boys all knew, but anyway, um, Todd's brother that lives with us, he knew, but South Carolina was under water. It had flooded. And so we were having to call and reassure so many people that we were okay, but then trying to find out what was going on. 
And then it turns out that Jonathan had been in Columbia with some friends and some of his church friends, and they literally were stranded. And so my boss was able to um, help them get to one of his properties in Blythewood, South Carolina, and allow them, you know, at a, um, you know, kind of friends and family rate, stay at the hotel until they were able to actually make it back home. So they were only like, you know, 20 to 30 minutes from us, but there was so much water in between them and us from dry land to dry land that they couldn't come home right away. But they were safe and that's all that mattered. And I'm just glad he wasn't alone, but yeah. So <laughs> it was just really interesting. But I'm going to tell you one other quick story about that particular trip. The day Jonathan left to leave us, he left after lunch. And so he left about 1230. And Todd and I then got ready and we packed a little lunch and some backpacks with water and, you know, snacks and whatnot as well um, for us and for Sadie. And we had decided because um, the lady that we were renting the cabin from told us about this really cool trail. <clears throat> and it was right there near the cabin. We just, you know, we drove to it. I mean, we could have walked, but thank God we didn't. Um, but anyway... It was just around the corner, so we, we pulled the truck in to where it stopped, and it was, you know, gated off, and we got out, and we proceeded to go walk this trail. Well, we didn't take a whole lot of water and snacks because she told us, you know, it wasn't a very long trail, but, you know, it was enough that, you know, we could probably, if we were walking and, you know, taking pictures and enjoying it, you know, the trail itself was maybe about an hour long, but, you know, give ourselves about three hours. So, okay. So we started all this at about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. I finished one round. Sweet. And she, um, and so we, we started at about 1 o'clock. And you guys... At six o'clock that night, we're still walking, trying to get to the peak of the mountain to look off. And Todd was like, Cynthia, we've got to turn around. Now, granted, we stopped and took pictures and stuff along the way. So it wasn't like, you know, it was, we've been walking that entire time. And we stopped and rested and had little water breaks and snack breaks and whatnot. But anyway, um, and just sat and enjoyed the mountain, you know, and um, Sadie was having fun chasing butterflies and listen to the birds and you could hear waterfalls off the side and, and she was fascinated by that. But we had to be careful because off the side were like huge drop offs like you would not live if you stepped off. So you had to be careful to stay on the path and the path was cleared. So it was a definitive path. But anyway, he was like, Cynthia, if we don't turn around, we're not going to get back to the truck before dark. And I kept, you know, stubborn me. I'm like, we got to be close, though. Oh, I'd hate to come all this way and not get to see it. And I said, we've got to be close. We've got to be close. And it got to be 630. And he's like, Cynthia, we're still not here. He says, look, you hold Sadie and I'm just going to run up around the bend and see if maybe it's just there, you know, because for something that was supposed to only be an hour, we should have way already been there. Well, I waited for a little bit and didn't see him. So Sadie and I got up and we started walking with the backpacks and whatnot. And uh, finally, he starts coming back around to me and he's like, look, I mean, I really ran. And he says, I still did not see the top of this mountain. He says, we're just going to have to call it. And I was so disappointed. However, I did not argue because I was already kind of getting in a state. I had not too long before that, um, only about March, April, May, June, July, August, September, seven months prior 
had been diagnosed as a diabetic. And so my legs were swelling, my feet were swelling, and I, I knew I needed like real food and whatnot. And I was overdue for my medicines and my shot and all that. So it was like, it was time to give up and go. So we turned around and oh my gosh, when it fell dark, it fell dark quick and it was really dark because a lot of times on the path, the trees hung over the path. So we didn't come prepared with flashlights and stuff because for an hour at one in the afternoon, we were going to be way back before dark at eight. <laughs> thank God we had our phones and thank goodness there was no cell signal so that, you know, we weren't on them using them up because we would have never made it back without using the flashlights on our phones. And we only use one phone at a time. And of course, you know, having to be careful with Sadie that she didn't run off the side of the ledge, you know, with us holding onto her leash. But anyway, it was, it was hard. And then it got to a point that my legs were so swollen that I was struggling to walk. So he ended up having, we had to stop and he found a branch and he whittled it down on the end to make it into like a walking stick and whatnot. And you guys, it was at one point, I just, I, I really did not think I was going to make it off that mountain. I thought, well, <laughs> it's a good thing we had a good run for a marriage because it's about to come to an end. I'm about to make my husband a widow. Like it was that, it was that bad. And, um, and again, he was so great. You know, he just kept encouraging me, you know, I'm sure it's just a little bit further. And of course we'd get that little bit further and we'd come around another bend and there would be no truck. And it was just like, you know, I just, I, I just cannot do this. And finally, I remember just breaking down and crying. And I told him, I said, look, you, you need to just go on and leave me. And of course, he was not going to do that. And I knew there was no way he could carry me and keep up with Sadie. And, and I wasn't going to let him try to carry me on his back even. And so we would just stop and take rest, you know. And um, anyway, I remember one time just saying, Lord, please. Please just get us back to the cabin. And uh, you guys, I got up and I started walking and we came around the bend and there was the truck. And it was everything I could do, even though the truck was in sight to get to that truck. And he had to literally put me in that truck. So he got some experience putting me in and out of a vehicle. <laughs> little did he know <laughs> but we got back to the cabin and my legs were so swollen my feet were so swollen that I could not even bend them but he got me in and um, you know he got ice packs and everything else and luckily I woke up the next morning and a lot of the swelling was gone but the, the tenderness the soreness was there so we spent that day inside um i mean like at the cabin we didn't go hiking we didn't go out anywhere else and we just kind of hibernated and watched movies and whatnot and um yeah it was cool the the lady we rented the cabin from she had movies there we had brought movies so we were set and uh we had a really good day but but that's the only anniversary trip we've been on since then um well, I just told a fib. We've only had one other one. We did have one other one. It was two years after that. We went for um, three days and two nights. We went to um, a little place here in South Carolina, uh, Beaufort. <laughs> and all I'm going to tell you about that one is uh, we got there. And we had not been there long and we found out that uh, there was a possible hurricane on its way. And sure enough, it came through. We lost power. So the entire weekend we were there, we had no power in the hotel room. We didn't go anywhere. We had planned to go to Edisto Beach and we'd planned to go to Savannah and out to Tybee Island. But you know, yeah, none of that happened. Um, we just stayed at the hotel. 
And um, I mean, we had our tablets and, and we had uh, backup chargers for all of our devices. But um, other than that, I mean, every now and then there was a generator that was running and in the lobby area and uh, we could go down there and charge things up and we usually did it when we went for meals. Meals were an adventure because they didn't really have power to cook cook anything so um, but it was fun and we bonded with other people because of the circumstances that we were in and it really ended up being a really nice time but uh, and I do remember that my girlfriend who made that sign behind me right there that says Cynthia's Craft Room. She's also a baker and she made us these cake pops and oh, and chocolate covered strawberries and oh, they're to die for. But anyway, so we have that, but okay. So those are the only two trips we went on, but by far the one week in the cabin in the mountains was our favorite. So yeah. So we've gone over a little bit, and I do apologize for that, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed this segment nonetheless. Hope you have sat and crocheted uh, for this hour and enjoyed yourself. I have completed one whole round um, on my blanket with you. I've got a little bit of a knot right here where they rejoin the yarn that I've got to fix. but. Um, I've gone from the gray over into this. It looks like it's a white, but it's not. It's actually a very pale mint green. And see, even in there, it looks white, but it's not. It's a very pale mint green. But anyway, um, yeah, I appreciate you joining me. I'm going to fasten off my work with Bree's gift to me that this too shall pass. And again, it was made by Rose Lights Crochet. So I'm going to go ahead and say bye. And I'm going to include a picture, as promised, of that rock that we found on our little journey during our week in the mountains. And I've enjoyed this once again. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me, crocheting, rewarding yourself with one hour of free crochet. And I look forward to reading all about your favorite anniversary story and maybe finding out when your anniversary is. And until next time, you guys have a great week. Be joyful, stay crafty in your own way, and make your own joyful creations. Bye.